Ho Chi Minh City, or rather Saigon, was back in the international news this past week after the withdrawal of the US military from Kabul in Afghanistan. Very quickly, the imagery of civilians trying to flee was compared to the US withdrawal of Vietnam the day before the fall of Saigon on April 30, 1975. That's right. Of course, the image we're all picturing at the moment is probably that iconic one taken by Dutch photographer Hubert Van Es. Uh, He took a photo of South Vietnamese civilians and CIA staff scrambling to board a waiting US helicopter resting on top of the elevator shaft above the then offices of the CIA at what is now 22 Litu Jom Street. Yeah, and was that like being billed as like the last flight out of Saigon, something like that, right? Or it just created this image that that was like the last flight out? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think it actually was Mm because I think the last ones actually did leave from the US Embassy. Mm, I think, Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Hey Matt, you did a you did um, a post right a little while ago, mm. like featuring that that same spot where a lot of where the helicopter was. Yeah, that's I, right. I remember. Did you do a video on that? Yeah, yeah, I did a cool. short video. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's on the bureau Asia dot com, and um, yeah, I always wanted to go up there and. Uh, I used to look at it because you can actually see the spot. Mm-hmm. The building's still there. The actual elevator shaft that the chopper sort of didn't really Landed. land on it, but it was resting on it, oh, yeah, just yeah, hovering yeah. Mm-hmm. above it. Um, where the, and then the people ran up the ladder to, yeah, to get on board there. there. It's all still there mm-hmm. and the uh, elevator's still working. There's still well. people living there too. Yeah, there are people living there. There are offices there. Um, so it's all there and it was sort of this time last year, I think, mm-hmm. uh, we found out that there was a cafe that but opened up there. it's not there. there. <laughs> it's not there anymore. It closed. Um, but it was very, you know, it was one of those places. It was a very, it's a very iconic, well, that photo is very iconic and yeah. uh, it was a good, it's a great place to see um, and just get a feel for it. Um, and... Yeah, it caught my eye, that post that you mentioned, Andy, because this week it started getting a whole bunch more hits. Mm. So obviously people were online comparing, looking at this situation in Kabul. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's good to know that we're getting discovered as well. Unfortunately, in a very very bad situation. Yeah, Yeah, true. True, but still, you know. yeah, it's good to good to see. Oh, we'll add it in the sh- Sorry, no, I was gonna say uh, for anyone who's, who's listening, like we should add that in the show notes below. Like, definitely check out that post. Uh, Matt yeah, I will for really, sure. Really, really interesting. Yeah, um, it's also a place. It's it's a very interesting place because um, even last year when I posted that online, I was getting comments. People were saying, "Oh, that's the U.S. Embassy. Mm. That's the final." You know, lifting off of, yeah. of, of the chopper, the last flight out. Um, and there were, I think there were even people sort of trying to argue the point. And I'm like, no, hang no, on, no, no, it's, no, not, no. it's not it. Yeah. It was the old CIA building. The US Embassy is actually a few blocks further over on yeah. uh, these one mm-hmm. street. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are, of course, choppers going in and out all day on uh, April 29 yeah. and April 30, I yeah. believe, on the day. Okay, so I thought it would be a good idea for each of us to recommend one historic place or site in Ho Chi Minh City that's kind of off the YouTube trail. Mm, uh, That's difficult (laughs) because I'm always on YouTube, so all my ideas are from there. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, that's why we're doing this, so we can provide people with something a little bit different. So um, hopefully when uh, this place opens up again to travel, people will go to our post Mm -hmm. and see these things that we suggest. Now, um, it doesn't have to be amazing to look at. Yep. Um, and it can. Oh, I have the perfect example for that. <laughs> and it can be a site. Stop looking at me. Where something happened, so mm. there doesn't necessarily have to be a building there or sure. anything remaining that suggests something happened there. Um, so who wants to go first? Uh, ladies first. Right, Emma. Lady first. Okay. So look, I personally would like to visit places or recommend people who are, you know, into. Um, novels, short stories, movies about Vietnam, not necessarily just in Ho Chi Minh City, but Vietnam in general. 
So, for example, books and movies uh, like *The Quiet American*, *The Scent of Green Papaya*, or even more recently, uh, *The King Kong* movie, right. which was shot on location here in Vietnam yep. as one of the the locations. So those are the kinds of places that I would recommend. Yeah, well, you're a huge movie buff yeah. as well, so that makes sense. Yep. yep. So like a year ago, um, we finally got to go to Sadek, mm-hmm. which is one of the locations mentioned in the autobiographical book and eventually a movie called The Lover by Margaret Duras. So obviously i can see your face it's like ah uh, eye roll it's uh, a very girly yeah. it's a very girly novel it's a very girly story yeah, i couldn't get through the novel or the movie <laughs> i'm afraid um so even if there was soft porn in it <laughs> <laughs> so anyway jane march i think that was the, the name of the actress um so we did a few videos about um the lover's house in sadek you know, and other places of Yeah, we interest. actually went to the house. Mm-hmm. Um, Where the, the Chinaman lived. That was the character, right? The Chinaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So it's still standing. It wasn't, it was kind of underwhelming, actually. Yes. Yeah, but. It, it, <laughs> I thought it was suitable because the book and the movie, oh, I come think, on. are underwhelming. Get so over so it. The, the lover's house <laughs> was the icing on the cake. It is, it is a. Uh, in a really nice location. Yes, it's near and, the market, um, near the river. And I guess mm-hmm. you do you get a you do get a good sense of mm-hmm. what was happening at the time. <laughs> to find out Matt's uh, full reaction. I'm struggling reaction. for words here, to be honest. <laughs> to find out Matt's full reaction to the lovers' house, we do have um, a YouTube video about that. But because, you know, it was such an interesting place, we also went around. Oh, and, yeah, well, yeah, and Sardec is a, yeah. is a must visit. Yeah, I, so, I thoroughly enjoyed that place. Yeah, so sure. that's my recommendation for when travel comes back. Sardec, nice give it a try. Nice one. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Mel. Andy? You know, I like, it's not as historic as what um, Mel said. I think, I think I'm like, damn, i gotta, I got to find better places <laughs> to go. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as long as but, better but, drinks. But, but, you live in a oh, historic well, area anyway, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I, I do live in a historic area, but there's nothing as cool as what you just said. It's like the only cool thing I find is like, oh, there's a lot of hens and they're, they're, they're really, really tiny. So it gives you that feel of, you know, being local, I guess, in a non PC type of way or. Or cultured. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get crucified saying that. Anyway, I'll move on because I'm digressing and I don't want to get totally demolished. But one place that I probably recommend, um, which adds that kind of Aussie feel, is the Caravelle Hotel. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Car- yeah. Because the Caravelle Hotel, like, it was open back, like, I think 1959. Um, it used to be the embassy uh, for the Australian embassy and New Zealand embassy. Right, that's right. All, like Australian yep. troops. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's depicted in there. And, um, you know, I think it had like a really cool, uh, like a famous Vietnamese architect um, oh, that kind of came in oh, and built it. I didn't her. know that. I, okay. Yeah, it, it's like, it's sort of it's like modern design. Um, and that was like a Vietnamese. Hey, you, you, actually, on a side note, do you know what I just found out? Um, for anyone who's like interested in like China, for instance, okay. the, the Forbidden City, one of the four, one of the major architects was actually Vietnamese. Oh, so wow. Think about that, like Vietnam. Yeah, so so one of the major architects was the Vietnamese architect. He was a eunuch uh, that, was, that came from North uh, Vietnam. Interesting. And did that. But anyway, that would be a reason why you would want to go to Forbidden City. But if we're in Saigon, Caramel Hotel is really, really cool. So yeah. if you ever, in, you know, when things open up again, Caramel Hotel, super duper cool, has an Aussie vibe to it. It's also downtown. Um, so you can easily, if you're on a romantic date, kind of walk up and down. Um, Are you doing you know, their marketing? No, I think he's uh, no. <laughs> he's doing recce for where he, when he's going, where he's going to take his next Look, date to. A, yeah, well, there's a great bar on the rooftop there, so it's it's on the the rooftop of the original building building, mm. and it's ninth sort of, it's, floor. I it's think it's got a roof, but it's kind of more open air, and mm. you look all the way down to Notre Dame Cathedral. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's where the war correspondents used to go. Mm. They used to go there for a drink. I think it was part of their five o'clock follies. Yep. Um, and across 
diagonally across from the building. Of course, you've got the, the opera house yeah. downstairs in front of the caravel. But diagonally across, the um, the old Eden building used to be there, yeah. of course. And, Where the uh, shopping mall is now. Yeah, there's a shopping Vincom. mall there and it's turning into Is the, it Vincom? Is it called Vincom? Yeah, I yeah. think it's owned by them, but it's also mm. now turning into the Oriental Hotel. Hotel. Is yeah. that what it's called? Five star. Um, big five star hotel. So they've, they've been doing that up. Um, and the old Eden building, I believe, was also a place where... Um, Journalists. The journos used to hang out and, yep. and share stories. Yeah. Um, of course, opposite is the Continental. Yeah, another um, historical um, yeah. hotel. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a good choice, Andy, because um, when was it, Mel? About six months ago, we mm -hmm. decided we were going to try and do a piece on yeah. sort of the, the five o'clock follies, which yeah. was um, we went to the happy hours. Yeah, we went to the Majestic Hotel, the Rex Hotel, the Continental. Yep. Continental Hotel. Yep. So all these old hotels yep. that where the journalists uh, I think sit we even and hang had, around. Yep. I think we even had sex on the beach at oh. <laughs> Rex. The Rex uh, has a lot of those old. Cop I'm talking about cocktails, of course. Um, and it's it's a great that bar up there is huge. Yeah. And it gives you a great view down Windway Street. Mm -hmm. The walking street. Yeah. But I think from memory, what we found out, I think we went to four or five places yep. over a period of a few Sundays. Yep. Old hotels. Yep. The the winner for me was the Continental. Yes. They had a happy hour that was about half the price of everybody else. And you can just people watch. People watch. You and can get a cocktail for about a hundred, five mm -hmm. bucks, hundred thousand or something. And towards uh, late in the afternoon, like maybe four o'clock, yep. the sun yep. is like hidden. Well, obviously it's not a direct sun. And then you can just relax there, yep. people watch and just, you know. That was winter yeah. too. Well, our cooler yes. month, so it was beautiful. Um, all right, I better give you mine. I'm going for something a little uh, off-piste. Okay. I'm suggesting a church, mm. which, uh, Mel, your eyes just opened wide up. Uh. Um, and it's not, not Notre Dame, um, which I believe is the oldest church in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the one I'm talking about is the Du Diem Parish Church. Okay, And Small. the Lovers of the Holy Cross Convent. Ooh. Um, Lovers of the Holy Cross. Yeah, I should have queued that one up. <laughs> um, it's been there since the 1820s or 1830s mm. and it's located across the Saigon River. Okay. Um, it's almost directly opposite the end of the Windway Walking Street. Yeah. So if you go down to the very end, um, you'll get to uh, Tonduk Tang Street, which Where the runs pier along is. the river. Yeah, where, where the you, ferry boats yeah, are. Yeah, where to you Vumtau. get the ferry to Vumtau. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and the local ferry. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look across the river, you'll see a church and the convents there as well. Um, these days, it's probably easy to see at night because it's lit up like a club. <laughs> the nuns are the nuns are it's, clubbing. <laughs> they're onto something, I think, um, because they've got like pink and blue neon lights that Ooh. go around the cross and, and around the eaves and stuff like that. So it looks. Yeah, it looks like a club, actually. <laughs> um, so I don't know what they're, they're up to, but it looks really cool. Yeah. And um, now, guys, I don't know if you, well, Mel does, but mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Andy, but I'm an ex-dairy farmer. Uh -huh. That's why your family your name. I yeah. grew up on a dairy farm. That's why your family name is oh. Cow <laughs> One. Ooh. Um, yeah, I, don't, what? I need to look into that history on my name. Uh, but I wasn't really officially a farmer, but my father was a dairy farmer. And um, five years ago or so, mm -hmm. I did a magazine piece on, on this particular church mm. and um, the Two Team Church. And uh, that was because at the time it was earmarked for relocation. Yeah. It's, um, no, you know, no one knew what was going to happen to it. and But it's still there. It survived. Yeah, they've, mm -hmm. they've managed to survive. And I've read uh, recently that they're going to stay there despite mm -hmm. all the development. And uh, when I was there, I was snooping around <laughs> before the, the nuns knew I was there. <laughs> and I came across a small dairy. Wow. So yeah. there's actually a small dairy... Um, to the side of the 
the uh, church. How many cows did they have? Uh, I don't know. They, they've just got a small number okay. there yeah. in the shed mm-hmm. and they milk them every day. And uh, I guess it's for the nuns and the mm. congregation and well, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so um, They're very self-sufficient, these nuns. You can't see it if you don't go there. You've really got to go there yeah. and see it. Yeah. Um, I hope they're still there. Yeah. I'm not sure. I haven't been there for a few years. But, um, you know, it's probably the world's most urban dairy farm. Mm. Now, that's an award I'd be proud of. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tansen Yat Airport. We have a dairy Run by nuns in a hidden club in the center <laughs> with a club in the center of Ho Chi Minh City. Now that's way more worth a travel gong. That's cool. I want to go. Yeah. <laughs>